This long video is brought to you thanks my patrons on Patreon. Hi everyone, my name is David Revoix and in this video I will show you how to make a comic page using Krita. This tutorial will learn you the various steps I'm using on my webcomic Pepper and Carrot to reach this type of final rendering. This video will also be a good introduction to Krita around a practical example. Check the video description if you want to discover or jump directly to a specific topic. As you can hear by my accent, I'm French and English is not my native language. I'm also not a really skilled English speaker, so you will find a lot of hesitation into this tutorial because I'm recording them live. So sorry about this and I hope you will understand the effort I put into recording this and I hope also you will have no problem with understanding the content of the tutorial. I'm using Krita version 3 with a basic customization of the interface. On the right, I'm using mainly three dockers. The top, the advanced set color selector. At the center, the brush preset with a pack of uh, my free brushes. And you will find a link to download them below the video on the description. And at the bottom, you will find the layer docker. I don't have a tool option docker around because I prefer to have it plugged on my toolbar. So you can set up it uh, via the settings in general, tools, and at the tool option location, select in toolbar. Finally, for my toolbar on the left, I'm using the lower size of icon and you can set it with a right click over it. Our first step is to transform a story into a storyboard. I'm preparing here a A4 landscape page in Krita to draw my storyboard. For this tutorial, I don't have a complex story. It's just a simple paragraph with the character Chichimi and a dragon. It's a random story I made especially for this tutorial. My first step is to break down this paragraph into separate action and obtain five panels. I usually create page with four, five or sometimes three panels. Then I'm drawing the panel as a movie storyboard without thinking about the comic page layout. The next step is to take care of the layout. And for this, I need to open two documents side by side in Krita. In my settings, I have the subwindow mode activated. You can find it on General, Windows, and Switch tab for subwindows. This way, I can reduce the storyboard on a side of the canvas and open my page template on the other side. You can download my comic page template. The link is in the video description. So in our storyboard, we can't put all the, the frame this way because our page is much more smaller. So we will have to change the layout and sometimes change the drawing too. But first I want to, to see uh, 
what panels can be easier to frame differently. For example, this one can be a very wide panel like this. So you can take the eraser and resize it. And also this three one at the end are action that uh, are very near in the timeline. Take it, throw it, bluff. So I think I will decide to go for a page like this with landscape on the top, main, because I already saw that this is the frame I would like to draw and show a more detail on it and maybe the more interesting in the page. And then three panel with Shishimi here with the object throwing and in the water. So I can already adapt my page layout and I will click on the frame layer and I will select the selection tool. It's uh, the top one, shape manipulation tool. And I will just take this separator, click on them and press delete on keyboard because I don't need them. And I will get almost the same layout. I'll take this one and move it a bit on the top. This way, and maybe this one a bit this way. I will zoom here to extend this one and this one. So on my template, the border of the comic are in gray, but you can change the color later and add some border and add some decoration. I will show it. This is only because it's convenient for me to, to keep drawing in black and white and have the border uh, with uh, a dark color at first. So as you can see on the layer, we have a little grid here on the top. You can activate or remove it. And so I can adjust the panel to fit the grid. So the landscape here, the main shot here. Mm, for this one, maybe just a little bit more room. And I don't like really the ratio of this one. So I will just move it a little tiny bit up. And yes, I think it will be my page layout. So I will just save this one, save as. Just going here, I'm doing a folder, artwork. I can also place a shortcut here. And I will just name it my comic page for this tutorial. Underscore 001, because maybe I will save more than one version and save it. Okay, now I will transfer the storyboard on this so I can select the selection tool. I'll click on the header here and select the storyboard. Control C, going to the header of my page and Control V. So the storyboard is a lot smaller, but it's normal. So I just press Control T to extend I'm resizing and I try to frame a bit the storyboard. This will give me just a, a big guideline, but we have to redraw everything. Pressing enter and first panel is done. Second panel, I select the storyboard and I continue.
For this one, we have a completely different ratio. So it's a bit more tricky. Maybe I will have to redraw it. Maybe I will have to redraw it for this three, and that's not a problem. So I have my pasted layer here, and I will just take them up to the sketch one, layer, here, and then I will flat them on the sketch with Control E. So I have a little glitch, sometimes it's happen, just blink uh, the visibility of the frame to remove this little uh, display bug. And I will storyboard now the other panel, so back to the brush, taking this preset, pressing shift to resize, and I will lower the opacity. Probably can do something like this. I will save a little room here for the speech bubble. The end with the object. And we will try to have like a curve here of after the hand with the object showing that she threw it and here an action that it's on the water. Oops. Just doing selection tool, center it a bit and deselect. And on the corner, maybe the eyes of uh, the dragon like this. I don't like this line. I will remove it. And I this way I start to, to clean my storyboard just a little bit. So this panel are not really linked. Just uh, it was some visual guide. And now I have a a pretty crappy storyboard, but I have a storyboard so I know the layout, <coughs> what type of action will happen on the on the panels, and uh, it's uh, already a good base because I'm at the good resolution to start to draw over. Uh, this step, pre-prod, I will save it. My artwork, I set my comic page, and zero zero just to save it in case I need it later, but I don't think I will need it. And for this page, I will save it with Control S too. So now to transform our crappy storyboard into a drawing or a painting, uh, we need to, to do a lot of work on the top of this. Of course, this is not final, this is just the idea. And the first thing I will do is to zoom a little bit and to make it visible the compo layer. It's a layer for the composition. And I select, I select the shape manipulation tool because it's a vector layer. And I select all the objects of the grid of the composition and I resize it to the panel size like this. And I press Ctrl C, Ctrl V to duplicate it. And I repeat the same process over all the panel. So this is always good to have an idea of the center of the panel or of the diagonal or the third. Uh, I pretty like the third rule. I know it's controversial, but uh, 
there is some recipe for making better composition and I think it works well. So I like to, to keep an eye on my composition. And when it's done, you can reduce the opacity of the composition layer because we only need it to be slightly visible. Like this. Something you probably noticed said is the panel color here are a bit similar than the background color of Krita. It allows me to focus a bit better on the panel and uh, consider them like different picture when I will start to draw. If you want to customize the color of the background of Krita, you can find it in setting, configure Krita, display, and it's the canvas border color here. So just click on it and you can even pick a screen color like this and take the color of uh, your frame uh, as a target. Press OK, OK, and you will get a very similar matching color for outside of your document and for your panel color. So I will also hide the grade here because I don't need it anymore. And I will rename this sketch layer as storyboard. And I will reduce the opacity of the storyboard. I'll create on the top a new layer name paint and I will start to paint over uh, my storyboard and to make a, a better composition. To make a better drawing on the top of this storyboard there is mainly two approach I like. Uh, the first one is to take the storyboard and reduce a bit more the opacity like this and on a paint layer take a pencil preset, I will zoom at 50% and start to just sketch some volume on the top. For example, like the shape of the head, shape of the torso, etc, etc. And then refine, find the, the first line, etc. This is the first way I like because uh, it's, it's something more traditional with uh, the white of the paper, with uh, a pencil approach, then you take another pencil preset a bit more dark and you just start to improve the detail. This is uh, the first type and the second type is something I'm doing a bit more recently. It's just uh, keep the storyboard a bit visible like this and on the paint layer take a brush preset like this one and directly paint some area. So I just paint over and this way I'm more approaching the artwork by mass, uh, by silhouette. And then when I have the, the silhouette I like, I will take the pencil, do another layer and start to outline it. So yes, this is just a, a little summary of what you will see next. Uh, because um, I won't comment the next minute. Uh, I will do a one minute non-commented and I will accelerate the video because now I will just paint. And uh, all the tool I will use will be this one. Hmm. And I will select maybe white color. Maybe I will pick color on the screen with the uh, control key. And uh, dark color, white color. And I will paint like this over my storyboard. So at any moment I can erase and see what I was doing. 
and sometimes I will even paint under the storyboard. So I erase now and uh, I will start the time lapse. There will be a little clock on the corner uh, if you want to skip it on the video and just jump uh, to the next uh, part commented. And that's how we end uh, our storyboard. It's a, like a painted storyboard result. As you can see, the face are not detailed, but they are detailed enough to have an idea of the story. And at this point, if you have uh, many pages, like seven, 10, or 30, uh, you can already read your story and fix your storytelling. So I really like this step because uh, it doesn't cost a lot in time to redo a panel. So it's uh, still not too late to fix one. And uh, you can re review the storytelling, add a bit of ambience, start to think about the light placement. That's why I like uh, the gray. Uh, so now I know that the light will come from here and I will already know where the detail uh, are important because of this light source and where the detail are not important. So I just flattened the two layers I had into the paint layer and we will move now to the next step. And the next step will be to add more detail on uh, the main point of the illustration. So there is the face, of course, there is a lot of work to make them a uh, good design and the end and the background. And for the background, I will just add a perspective uh, layer. It's a grid for perspective. And it's a grid I have in my resource. And you will find the link on the description below the video also. Um, I just take my grid on my file explorer. And I will drag and drop it on my canvas. So up. And I press insert as a new layer. So it's just a big star of line. I press Ctrl T. As you can see, it's a big, uh, big picture with star. I made this picture with Inkscape, a vector editor. And I resize it to the size of my panel. So here will be my vanishing point. And I check if the line will be good for the castle and it's okay. So I press enter. 
So this is a big picture. It will take some time to, to resize, but now I have my grid ready. I will just select the select tool and remove a bit uh, the part of the perspective that are over the other panel. The other panel have also a perspective, but uh, it's not uh, so needing uh, to get a, a grid for it. You can get a feeling like this. That is quite okay. So I will just keep uh, uh, the grid for this view, especially for uh, the design. And I need another one here for this type of angle. So I just duplicate this one and I move it and I keep the vanishing point on the same. on the same horizon line, like this. And I try to adapt it to my crappy sketch, like this. So I have an idea now how this perspective will work for this city in background. If I want to color this line of perspective, I just press Ctrl U and press Colorize. I put a bit of lightness and a lot of saturation and as you see the guide will start to color in red and if you change the U, U, you will get some blue and etc. Just take some bright blue and I redo the same. I can just click here, last used and change the... we we'll take a red one for this one. So now we have some color red line for this guide. Press Ctrl E and name it Persp for perspective. And I will place it on the top layer here. Maybe this kernel of the perspective vanishing point I didn't need. So just press the brush. I take an eraser, a soft one, and I just remove this kernel because it will be a bit hard to paint with this one visible. I reduce a bit the opacity. Yes, now it's good enough for me to, to be guided to, to do some detail about this. So I will start again another time lapse now. And in this uh, time lapse, I will select the paint layer, I will directly paint on the paint layer, and I will just add some more detail. So see you back in one minute. Oh, and don't forget to save.
So now our detail pass is finished. Uh, it's not a big detailing. Uh, as you can see, there is still a lot of parts that are uh, pretty rough and speed painting. But there is also a rear with already pretty good detail. And by detail, I mean uh, now we can see which, what will be the pose of Shishimi, what will be her facial expression here or here. Uh, what is the position of the hand? Uh, as you can see, uh, they are still not really detailed enough, they are still a bit uh, weak. Um, as you could see also, I like to play with the design during the painting. Uh, I changed uh, quite little things with the castle, with the design of the dragon. And uh, this is probably because I was used to do some concept art before with speed painting. And uh, so uh, drawing with painting directly with this uh, gray uh, is good for me because uh, I can be a bit more creative. I I'm not uh, a prisoner of my line. But I really like doing lines. Uh, so, uh, I will add now a bit of line, that's the next step. And to add them, uh, first, if you want to see, I can blink the layer. The, the, it was the version before. And if I turn the visibility of my layer with detail, you can see how the detail changed. But I don't need this layer anymore, so I just press uh, select the top layer and I will press Ctrl E to just merge it down. Uh, if you keep the mouse over, uh, you see on the preview that we have some painting around the canvas. Uh, it's, it's really visible on the, the, the top part. So if I remove the frame, you can see there is some painting, but we have also painting outside. Um, and if you want to clean it, because uh, your fill size will be smaller, you can go to Image and Trim to Image Size. So sometimes there is some glitch like this. Uh, don't panic, it's not a part of your artwork you lose, it's uh, just a, a glitch of Krita. Uh, just turn the visibility of uh, one of your top layer off and bring it back and all will be okay. It's a known bug. And now, if I select it, you can see it's not usually all trimmed, but uh, uh, maybe it's not so obvious and visible uh, on this little preview. And now I will do a new save. So you saw that uh, I can do a Ctrl my S to save as and enter here a new number, like after three, four, etc. But there is also a built-in feature of Krita. You have here in file and it's file save incremental version. And if you press it, uh, it will automatically save uh, with a new number at the end. So I press it, Krita is saving. And now you can see here, I'm at the version four, not the version three. So if you want to keep a sort of history of your file, when you delete a layer and just move on, uh, you can use the save incremental. So after this detailing of the storyboard, we can move to the next step. And for the next step, I will reintroduce some drawing and some line. Uh, I will ink my drawing. Uh, I know it's a bit weird to do the painting and to ink after, but that's how I like it. It, because when I paint, uh, as I just explained it, I prefer to do some concept and to uh, add some light source. And I like to reintroduce after uh, just a very light line art. Uh, and for this, I just take the paint layer and I will reduce the opacity to something very bright, maybe like this. And on the top of this layer, I will just create a new paint layer and I will name it ink. And so I will just ink the characters because I, I like to keep uh, the landscape as just painted. Uh, and uh, I will also accelerate the time lapse during uh, I ink this character. Uh, I will ink them 
just a note before launching the time lapse uh, with this pencil it's a dark pencil uh, and uh, if you see at low pressure oh, i will select a good color at low pressure i will zoom it because on the video maybe it's not obvious but at low pressure i have a little grain and when i press the line became uh, a bit more uh, regular and here i have a grain some fuzziness on it and i really like it because it's uh, a, a bit less digital and boring than a, a digital inking uh, tool so i prefer to use this i'm not sure i will use the size 10 maybe uh, i will use it a bit smaller on some character but uh hmm just testing a bit yes maybe i will use nine or even something uh, else i will just probably continue some test but uh, i will record all this part without audio so i can focus on uh, the hard work so another three detail before starting the inking uh, the first one is i will turn the ink layer to 85 percent of opacity i will also use a shortcut on my keyboard to switch to the previous preset so here if i have the uh, pencil and i draw and then i take the eraser i can press the slash on the numpad key to just go back to the previous it's something I already introduced it in another previous video and you might be familiar with it but I think it's still important to remind about this key and the third thing I will use is of course the stabilizer so this is my tool option and I will switch from no smoothing to stabilizer and here I have a setting for my tablet and my screen that works for me if you want to find a good setting for you uh, just uh, do the same setup than here put a very high value like uh, maybe 100 or 60 and then test uh, for example I, I will use it because i will show show you how to find a good one so just just do a large one like uh, 100 like this and then at the zoom you want to do inking I will take the, the right brush try just to, to draw a, a small shape like this or just like, like, like you would do for quickly draw a little circle for an eye or something and as you can see here maybe it's difficult because it's in little but uh, m my movement are not following really my cursor I feel limited so in this case I will reduce by 10 for example here I will go to 90 and test again and now I have a bit more control but I still can't really close the circle so I reduce 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 by 10 by 10 by 10 and when I feel comfortable it's uh, the right setting so I think with my other tablet, when I'm using the laptop in travel, I I'm using other value. So it really depends on, on the size of your screen and on the size of your tablet. Even when I do a demo on a, on a projector screen, I have to test and change it. It's not something absolute. If you just uh, do the same value as I do, you will not find a good stabilizer for yourself. Oh, yeah, I just test again. Yes, this one I'm a bit free of my movement, and there is enough stabilization when I do a long curve to have this perfect smoothing that I like. So yes, it was a, just a little note to remind of uh, this 85%, this key to switch and this uh, stabilizer i set up before inking so now i will launch the time lapse see you in one minute
I'm doing now a little pause in the inking process to show you some highlight of what was important for me. Uh, and first I wanted to show you, and you probably saw it, that I didn't really, uh, I will increase a bit the opacity just before explaining, so you can see better. So I increase the opacity of the sketch. And I didn't just outline the drawing. As you can see, the eye here is a little bit lower than this one. And when I drew, I also fixed uh, the volume and uh, I made uh, uh, all the, the part easier to read. For example, if I turn off the inking, you can see that this end was really uh, simple, really not detailed. And I tried to uh, draw over and not just outline my speed painting. It's not how it works. You can't just outline uh, a speed painting. Uh, you need to, to really draw over and uh, just invent and uh, fix all the details. So when, when you did this, you, you can also add some details and uh, sometimes the speed painting under can help you to, to have a bit of chaos, uh, some chaotic shape to add some interesting details at the, the scale pattern on the, the back. If I turn off and you can see that this little stroke of painting just guided me to, to make some suggestive uh, little uh, ink of scale. And uh, so I wasn't tempted to draw every scale, but uh, just to un underline a uh, few of them. And uh, of course, uh, all this little detail helps to, to make uh, the render a bit more final. So now I will just continue. Uh, I, also, as you can see, I, I flip uh, the canvas with the M key for the mirror so I can see the volume, the shape uh, in a two uh, way. And it helps my brain to, to not focus on, a sim on, a, on the same picture. So uh, it's like if I can fix two pictures uh, and uh, so I can refresh my eyes, refresh the picture I have in front of my eyes and uh, try to, to fix more error. So I will continue the inking now with uh, all the other panel and I will launch again the time lapse. Now the inking is done and uh, as you could see I had to change the haircut of Chichimi here to match uh, this one because I preferred the, the, the haircut here. Uh, I also uh, spent a lot of time on the hand 
uh, that's still my weak point on uh, anatomy and on character but I try to do always the best I can and I spend more time on it uh, but it's not optimal yet maybe one day I will uh, find a good way to make a perfectly drawn hand I also didn't inked uh, the background or the part I think uh, they will be easier to to paint and uh, that's why I like this technique because I'm not ha I don't have to ink everything and I can save time because on this part or on the tree uh, inking all the different little leaves of the tree uh, can be really 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 time consuming and so now I will transform my uh, inking uh, into a black and white page uh, this is for the one who, who like to, to have a, a black and white result in my in my case it doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, I have some part of the drawing that are painted but I will show you how to make a pure black and white page now uh, so first uh, you will hide the visibility of your paint storyboard layer so you keep only your black and white line and then we will transform the frame so just before doing this uh, I think it's uh, wise to do a little save I will do a, an incremental version I'm going to version 6 here and I will flip with M key to the original uh, mirror view because I was in mirror head but uh, as you could see uh, I draw uh, on both sides so it doesn't really matter to me uh, but there is an original orientation of the drawing and I try to keep it uh, this orientation is because it's follow the rhythm rhythm of uh, of reading of the picture so from uh, top left to bottom right for me because it's how I read so you can see that I, I follow this diagonal on the picture and yeah, I just counter it to make a, a little uh, a jump on the picture and here just also but uh, that's just a little parenthesis on uh, what I did and uh, to turn the frame because I have this uh, vector layer of frame to something white with a black border you just need to click right click on it and as you can see there is already a little fx symbol on, on the on the right so just right click and go to the layer style and as you can see this uh, black gray color here is done by a color overlay into normal and into this dark color so you can just turn this color to white and now you have your frame in white and just add a little stroke here so by default the stroke is really large uh, yes 21 pixel uh, we will turn it to 3 pixel just a thin line like this position outside yes it will be outside the vector object but uh, you can say uh, at the center so it's a little bit thinner the mode multiply uh, no just take a normal and 100% and the color is already set to black so yes it's it's good and you can press ok and now you have your panel in white with a stroke like this and you can still move your your frame if you want um, for example this one you can still move it here and it might take time to refresh because we have an fx on it but uh, this uh, process is a bit flexible because uh, as you can see it auto merge uh, the vector object together to trust your uh, to trust your panel so you can even uh, make a large panel and put it a bit with this type of rotation if you want of course the update time will be a bit longer and sometimes it can be very very dramatic with critter uh, to, to retrace some uh, layer effects but uh, uh, the job is done and that's the, the, the main main part so let's wait 
Yes, as you can see, you can follow the rendering because it's so slow. Come on, come on. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yes, it remember me the, the old ray tracing on the old 3D software. And But when it's done, it's done. And uh, in the recent version of Krita, the 3 version and probably uh, the, the future version, uh, maybe this will, will be a speed up, this little step. And also when you work on another layer, uh, all of these pixels uh, don't refresh every time. So uh, it's only when you move them that uh, this thing is slow. But uh, that's a, a price to pay uh, with uh, working with this type of flexibility because as you could see, I could change the layout uh, as I wanted and I can change the color of the panel and the width of the line. So I will just undo all these things I did to go back to my layout. Just go back in time with Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z. And now I have my black and white page. I will turn back the visibility of my paint layer here under. So now I have my painted uh, background and my uh, character. I will just reveal a bit the opacity of my storyboard this way. And now I start to have a, a little shading and that will help me to start the pre-color. Uh, at this step, I usually uh, just fix a bit the, 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 the background painting and I adjust it. And uh, I, I will do it uh, on the fly because there is not a lot not a lot of things to fix. So I will do it uh, in live demo. So just turning back the uh, opacity of the layer a bit more like this. And I will take a brush, maybe my uh, favorite brush. And I will create a, a layer in between a fixed paint, for example, and just pick with control the color and I try to paint and so I'm really bad to, to, to speak at the same time of painting because I'm thinking about many things at the same time but this is not really really a big thing and I don't want to launch a time lapse uh, only for this little this little correction this little fixing so just doing them because after I want to show you how I prepare my my artwork for the next step. So yeah, it's almost okay for this panel. I could refine it a bit more, but uh, that will be the, the next step anyway. And here I thought about this and maybe the belt. Yeah, maybe this shape a bit. Mm. There is always a big work of cleaning, but yes, I consider this okay for for going to the next step. And the next step is usually the the version that my translator have. Uh, it's a black and white version, so just uh, merge now the speed painting with uh, my fix. Just Ctrl E. So now I have only this version in gray and I reduce it to 50%. So the gray are really, really, really bright. And so uh, the eyes can still catch uh, only the line art and still get some ideas about the painted element. And on the top of this, I'll add a filter layer just on the top of my painting and filter layer. It's a filter, but uh, that's just a filter that uh, makes its uh, work on the, the previous layer in the stack 
or all the, the bottom of the stack. And I will take the color, no, not the color, adjust and color balance. So this can take uh, a bit of time to compute on your side. Uh, I usually just put the, the, the shadow, the shading, uh, with a bit of blue in it. Like this, a bit of cyan to not make it too, too much violet. So as you can see, it's subtle, but uh, all the, the dark got slightly bluish. And I will take the mid-tone to something a bit red and yellow, just to make the picture just a little warm. And the bright, uh, sometimes I leave them white like this, because I think it looks good. But uh, sometimes I just add just a little bit of yellow, like this. And this way you obtain, uh, it's not it's not color red, but uh, if you need to 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 show this uh, comic pages to, uh, for example, uh, in my case, it's uh, all the translator team of Pepper and Carrot, and you obtain something that uh, is a bit uh, more sympathetic to the eyes than something black and white. You obtain something uh, with a gradient of colors and uh, for just a, a little filter here. Something I also do with pepper and carrot is to remove the dark line on the panel because I prefer only white panel. So just go back to the frame layer, vector layer, right click on it, layer style, and I just uncheck the stroke. That's how I obtain my borderless panel. And right now, at this step, because I say that this is the version I use uh, to communicate with the translator, it's also the step I use to enter the speech balloon and the text and uh, also all the sound effects. At first, in the first episode of Pepper and Carrot, I was doing it with Krita here, and I was just turning the text layer on. And you can see you have a little default text, replace it if you can. But uh, I remove this because uh, now I do it only with Inkscape. And so we will do now a little chapter on Inkscape and how to make the speech balloon and use the resource I provide to to add quick speech balloon and quick text on, on this picture. But we have a file that is a Krita file, finishing by K-R-A, Kra, and uh, Inkscape can't read this Kray file. So uh, we need to do a transitional file, a transitional exported file, a flattened image, and don't use it don't use this uh, export to save, but we need to do a transitional PNG file to work with Inkscape. So I will just save at first my car array. And when this is saved, because the, the Krita picture can save all this layer and I want to keep my layers, and I will just export. And export will just uh, save a copy. So here I have all my pages and I will do the my comic page without extension and PNG just typing the extension save and here I have some option for the PNG uh, just uh, because I have a good processor uh, I use a maximum compression but if it takes too much time, you can use six or just a bit lower value, but it will take more disk space and press OK. So the exporting is in progress. As you can see, Krita uh, doesn't react. It's almost like frozen, but I can see on my second screen that uh, the field is saving. And if I take my file browser here, you can see that uh, I have my exported picture here. 
And now that's a picture I can even share on internet if I want. Or it's a picture I can open with the image viewer. And I will be able to open it with Inkscape. So here is a little chapter about Inkscape. And uh, Inksc uh, I use Inkscape because uh, the text tool is uh, not really good in Krita right now, but uh, uh, if uh, you are watching this video in one or two years after the publishing of this video, I'm sure Krita will have all the necessary tools to make good text and good speech bubble in Krita. It's almost have everything needed, just a problem of stability and problem of uh, a uh, little glitch visual bug that make uh, the tool not really uh, good to use on a daily basis and not really predictable if you have uh, like a lot of page and uh, on pepper and carrot I have more than 100 page and uh, there is uh, like 30 translation so if you do the math uh, I have like 3000 page uh, to, to manage so it's a bit impossible with uh, something buggy, a solution buggy, so. Uh, but it will change soon. So we make this little chapter about Inkscape. Inkscape is also an open source program about uh, vector and you can find it on inkscape.org uh, if, I, if I remember. Uh, and uh, on Linux, uh, you can just use your package manager and uh, your software source or uh, every method to just install it. So here I have it, uh, let's see, maybe I'm just used to call it by opening a file, but yes, by default, I think we have a A4 pages uh, on Inkscape, but I will check the document property and yes, it's uh, A4. So that's the same uh, ratio as my template. And so I can uh, just take my file manager and you have my comic page here and just do a drag and drop. And normally Inkscape will open it, the file in it. So it will probably uh, ask you to, uh, should we link the file or embed the file? It's up to you. I prefer to link them because uh, it's easier after to refresh, but uh, sometimes uh, the option uh, doesn't appear and we will have to 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 change it later so yeah we will see but at the moment i will just put the artwork yeah and i'm pressing control to preserve the page ratio and now i have my pages and i will save this file uh, artwork and I will use also the same file naming my comic page but uh, this time in SVG which is the native file of Inkscape. The next step I'm using is uh, uh, just to, to, to create here uh, the text and change the, the font here and trust uh, the, the speech balloon themselves. So I, I do them manually, just uh, creating vector object and filling them with white and removing with shift and click the, the border. Uh, this is how I did uh, all the first 10 episodes of Pepper and Carrot and then I saw that all the speech balloon and all the, the, the shape are really coming back. It, there is not a lot of variety. So uh, what I did is uh, I made a big template and uh, so I just can do copy pasting and uh, it, it results in this big file here. So it's a file with uh, ready made a lot of uh, vector object i made them myself and uh, there is tail of speech balloon speech balloon themselves with a lot of style you have a lot of uh, uh, font with effect for uh, ready uh, speed effect uh, uh, sound effect sorry for my vocabulary and my english language but uh, yes this file you will find it also 
on uh, the description of the video. You will find a link to download it. It will be part of this tutorial. And uh, if you don't find it, try to find the original page of the tutorial. I will, I will keep a, a version to download of, about it. And so the only things you have to do is to open this SVG file in Inkscape too. And I will also add the font I'm using here. It's uh, the Lavi font. So it will be included in the pack. It's a font, uh, I open source font for pepper and carrot. And uh, we, we kept the development on it. I'm not the original author. Uh, I will probably uh, on this video overlay the, the name of the original creator because I don't know it. Uh, 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 by, I don't remember the, the exact name, but uh, a big thanks for this uh, very good font for comic. And uh, there is not a lot of good open source comic fonts. So that was a real pleasure to find it. So at first I start with the text themselves. And this is the default non flowed text. Well, maybe I, I, will, I will fix my template a bit. And just press Ctrl C, so it's open in an Inkscape uh, view, and I press back my my other. So in this view, Chishimi will say nothing, and maybe she will say a little thing here. So I just add something, and you can resize it to the size you want. And you can edit with a double click uh, with the text. So uh, I remember in my script, I didn't have some dialogue. So it's a bit hard to improvise a dialogue. Now I'm recording. Uh, we'll just say that uh, my English is not really good to compose dialogue in English. So should we really keep this? Uh, I will not write this ring because it's obvious it's a ring, finger ring. So should we really keep this? She's thinking out loud and sorry for the cheesy dialogue, but it's just something I, I'm improvising. And three little dot, probably not. And she decided to put it in the water. Uh, this is not the part of a bigger story. This is a, like a little scene for this tutorial. So I'm just trying to, to see where I can put the, my text. And as you can see, uh, Inkscape also have some glitch visually. You can, a little and if you zoom in back uh, you will uh, make a refresh so we have our text and I will take back my comic template dum, 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 dum. we'll take maybe this shape of balloon here Control C going back to my comic page and I will press Control V to pass it. And now my object a speech balloon is on the top of the text. So uh, I just go here and uh, ask to lower the position of the object. So up. I like the, the white speech balloon with white frame because you can merge them sometime like this. Something I also really like sometime to do is to reduce the opacity of the frame just a bit of the of the speech balloon and i will add a little tail to to show that this balloon come from her mouth and not from the ring or not from the the dragon so we'll take uh, maybe this one it's a weak one a bit hesitant and Chishimi speak a bit like this. Oops, this is Krita. This is a good one.
So if you click a second time on the object, you have the rotation. And if you click one time, you can scale them. It's a very good system. Something I al always like it from the ergonomy of Inkscape. Really easy to use. And if you want to change the point of the vector object, you have here another selection tool. And you can just drag a little to make the speech balloon looking a bit better. Okay, so now it's okay, I think, for this one. Maybe not uh, the, the best. I will take another speech ba balloon for the probably not. Uh, no, she's not screaming it. Just a regular rounded balloon, so just take another one. Resizing. Putting it in the background. And I will add just a little tail to show that it's uh, still her from here. Let's pick. Up. So a little tail I can use that is more direct, this one, like this, rotation, scaling, and this way. And we will add a little sound FX here. So uh, I have some ready-made text effect with uh, some effect to have some shadow and some outline. This one looks good, but no, maybe a bit uh, too shaky. So maybe I will take this one, just a simple one. It's black. Oops, I passed that into Krita. Oh, this is the Inkscape. And I don't know the sound effect of uh, water in English. Uh, and maybe uh, say uh, pliff. No, doesn't look, doesn't sound really good. Pliff. Uh, ploof. Ploof. Wow. That's. You probably will comment on the video to, to tell me what is the, the right sound. But yeah, for this tutorial. I think it will be okay. So just a little sound like this. Maybe here I can also do a little pick because the, the, the finger just do the sound. So whoop, we'll take uh, maybe just a default text. I can duplicate this one and do pick. I will remove the dot. That's okay. And if you click a second time, you have also this one to deform a bit. So I will use this fake italic effect. Put it a bit like this. And I think it's okay. So when it's done, you can save your uh, SVG, your Inkscape project. Now let's come back to Krita and in uh, this chapter we will uh, do a colorization of our comic pages and for this I will first remove the color balance because we will start from the ink layer and our gray la layer, the one we made the sketch with. So I turn it to 100% again, just to get back the value. And I will try to fix the value first.
So I will duplicate it. And uh, I see that when I duplicate it, uh, I have some little refreshing problem here. And it's because my layer here is partially transparent. So I want to flatten uh, all the pixel on above this. So I will create another layer. We'll name it BG for background, it's temporary. Just filling this layer with a white color and I flatten this one under. So now when I duplicate this layer, a copy of background, restore the old name, paint and copy of paint. Now the layer have solid color on it. So this one and this one, it makes no difference. So why I duplicate it, it's just because if I want to do some change on this one layer, I keep a backup layer under. So if I do something, uh, just a mistake, I can still uh, keep some information about the previous layer. And I often work this way. Uh, I work on a separate layer and when the result is okay, I just flatten it. If we want to change the value of our paint layer, uh, we will have mainly three tools. Uh, the first two ones uh, are filter. So we have the adjust level here. And you have some ruler that can uh, just improve the contrast, but also you can cut the black or cut the white. That's the first tool we have. Uh, to, to tweak value. The second tool is uh, a bit similar and it's in filter adjust and it's the color adjustment curve. And here you have the RGBA channel that are all the channels. So you, you can also do some tweaks here, but there is a channel that is lightness that is a bit more interesting. So if we want to make some contrast, you just make a S curve like this and you will see some uh, good contrast happening. And also the, the third and the last uh, way we will uh, use to, to improve contrast is also with the brush and uh, using uh, a preset. I have some preset like uh, this one to improve the light or this one to, it's an overlay blending mode. So with a dark color, you, you can darken some zone some area and with some bright color you can brighten but at the same time you don't destroy everything like a, a normal brush so uh, you can play on a big halo of light like th this way. So I will use this three method to improve the, the, the value of this picture and uh, I will do a, a not do maybe a little time lapse about it. Maybe I will do it live and comment why I'm doing it. It will maybe take time, but maybe it will be more interesting. The first thing we will do is to take the selection tool rectangular and we will do a rectangle around the panel we want to change. So this way I will change only the content of this panel with the filter and not all the, the other panel because uh, I didn't make the same value on all the panel and I need to tweak only one by one. So I will call the level filter with control L and just improve a bit the, the darkness because it's a night scene. So I want some pretty low value on it. And because I'm doing a, a comic style I want uh, the line art to still be a bit visible. So I will ask the, the black to not be pure black, but to be just a dark gray like this. And you can hit preview button. So we, we went from something that is really bright, almost looking like a, a, a bright scene to something that is uh, really low and really d dark, maybe a bit too much. So maybe I will, Play a bit with the setting. Preview. Uh, this is a bit darker. This is a bit that I like. 
this looks a bit more okay to my eyes so just pressing ok and we have the, the result so we can still uh, hide the visibility of the top layer to see uh, what we did and if we have an effect that is too strong we can still also reduce the opacity and merge the two layer together that's why I always keep a backup um, I will do the same for the other now and I will probably launch a time lapse and accelerate the video as you can see I already accelerate because uh, it's uh, a bit repetitive and I first will fix all the value then I will clean the picture and add a color balance on all the panels and the next step will be to apply some blending mode uh, so I'm launching a, a big time lapse and feel free to skip it uh, because uh, it's how I finish the color sketch So during the previous time lapse, uh, what I did uh, was to focus on the lighting and as you could see, if I turn off what I did to what was previously, uh, previously on my first sketch, the light were coming from the top. So all the dragon was lighting from the top and I decided uh, during this color sketch and during this cooking of color, not only to influence the color, but also to paint another shading. And uh, I added uh, now only the, the light from the, the moon, which, ma which make a, a big rim light on the character. So if I, if I put off and you can see, and of course this also affect this character. And I also could make a point of warm color here, here, and on the sky. So I can lead the eyes on this area and put some other area outside a bit colder. So this is a system I use it here, here, also here, a bit brighter color, and here to lead the action. Another step before starting to detail is to also take care of the color of our line art. 
So the line art is this layer, ink, and if I zoom in, you can see that I drew it with black color. And sometimes this black color can be sufficient for your type of rendering, but uh, for the style of pepper and carrot, I try to sometimes erase a part of the line art. Uh, and especially when there is like this, a big rim light, like here. And uh, I think it's uh, not looking natural to have uh, a very light, bright light source like this of the moon. And suddenly a black line. I think it doesn't look right, but I like when uh, the black line are like this. And uh, in this case, the black line looks a bit like uh, uh, some deep shadow or detail. So it's okay. And sometimes when the, the black line are outside the volume, uh, they, they can just look like the volume is turning and there is a little part in the shadow. So uh, this type of line works and some other type of line like this black line on the air doesn't work. Also, uh, like the black line on the nose here uh, is too dark for uh, a skin color. So on the skin, you will never have a black shadow like this. Uh, so this is heavy stylization. Uh, same for this line of the face. And so I don't like it a lot. So what I will try to do is to color the line art and I will show you my technique to color the line art. To color the line art, uh, it will be a bit easy because uh, I made, I drew this line art directly on a transparent layer. So this line art only has a dark pixel or semi-transparent dark pixel and transparent pixel. What I like is just to lock the alpha. So it means locking the transparency of the channel here, the little checkerboard, and you see there is a padlock appearing. And select the color I want. In my case, it's a red and like one or one and a half value. So very dark red like this or a very saturated brown. And I will just edit fill with foreground color. And this way I will get the exact color of the line art I want. So this is just to give a little warm touch to the line art, to all the shadow, as you can see here and here. So at first, and because now we don't have a very black, a uh, very dark line art, I will put this layer into multiply blending mode. And so you will see that uh, when the line art will be over a dark color, like here, uh, the line will turn a bit black. So if I put it to normal like before, uh, it will look a bit unnatural to me to have a, a similar value on the shadow. But with multiply, we have it uh, turning black on a black area and on bright, like here, turning like a brown area. So our setup is almost finished and uh, during the next step, it will be a time-lapse step. Uh, what I will do and what you will see me doing is uh, I will take my brush, so just this brush, and sometime I will select the ink layer and because it's alpha locked, I can just paint, take some yellow and paint the line art just a bit yellow at this, at this uh, right moment. So if I uh, right click and isolate the layer, just to see the content of this layer, you will see that now I painted, I colored my line art into this color. And if I want to come back to, to the dark red, I just select the red, the, the red value and just color it back. So this way I can't really go wrong. It's a very flexible way. And uh, if I want to paint the shadow on the skin of uh, Chichimi on the line art with a, a brighter red like this, you can see that I can color my line art really easily this way and uh, I can always come back and, and color it uh, darker later. So this is what I will do, especially on all the surface with a, a bright light on it. 
like this and like this. Uh, and it will be part of my detailing cleaning pass. So I will just do a little save, incremental version, and launch a time lapse. So one of the first post-production effects we will do is a pass on the paint layer, just a copy of the paint layer, with a big brush with the Doge, color Doge blending mode, and we will boost the light, so the light of the moon, and uh, also the light of uh, the little fire here. And uh, I will blink the layer so you can see uh, uh, the difference. It's a little post-effect, but always good on the light source. The second effect is a fog effect and for this you need a new layer on the top of the ink in lightened mode and just a scribble 
uh, some particle with it with a big brush and then put uh, some filter, some Gaussian blur filter on it and uh, you can also smudge a bit the detail and reduce the opacity to make a, a sort of fog on all the overall, even on the top of the inking. Another effect uh, is uh, just uh, to take a part of the picture to duplicate it and here I'm using a gimmick filter, a ripple and I will use also the gimmick filter water to obtain some deformation and to paint more easily the ripple and deformation on the water of this panel. Another lighting effect, and this is a really important one in my opinion, is about all the little glossy points. And for this, I create a new layer here. And I usually name it paint over because I don't limit this layer just to paint some glossy point, but sometimes to do some other type of correction on the top. So it's a layer on the top of our stack our graphic stack in this group and I'm using it to, to paint uh, the reflection like the little white point uh, of the gloss in the, in the eyes usually taking some white and a very small brush like this and doing little reflection I also like to take a pencil and just some little stroke of white pencil here and there. Now our gloss pass is done and as you could see I not only added some white point during this time lapse but I also added some little correction here and there like little shadow here. Uh, I will just blink the paint over layer so you can see. Uh, fixing here just a blue shadow. So I use this paint over layer to just fix quickly uh, a lot of little things but mainly to add little white point. So we will enter now in the last step and the last step when all is done like uh, now is to just add a filter layer on the top of the graphics in my case and it's a so it's a dynamic filter and this filter will be on all the picture except the frame Oh, it appears in, into the group, but uh, I will move it later. And this filter is the Enhance Sharpen. So this layer don't have any configuration. Uh, you don't have the power or the opacity of the Sharpen filter here. But as you can see, by default it's pretty strong, so I will just move this filter, I will rename it directly sharpen. You can see there is a little filter icon here. And uh, if I turn it off, as you can see you will get a lot of crispy detail with it, 
but you will get also a lot of noise if you zoom in. And this noise is not really good if you print or if, if you do something. So that's why it's good to keep it dynamic. Uh, I never use it 100%. Sometimes I use it like 60%. So you can reduce the opacity of a, a layer like this. And the effect will be a bit more subtle. So sometimes even like 35%. And compared to this blurry result, you will already get a little bit more detail. So I will just set, set up the sharpen layer. Uh, I think the comic will be seen online at 40%. So pe most people will see the, the comic and read the comic at this size. Just watching. I think I use 60% or 70% sometime on paper and carrot. I have to check, but I'm almost sure. You can find it on the source. Each comic has a, a sharpened layer like this. So yes, it makes the, the detail a little bit more crispy. And uh, now when you have your result, you can do the last saving. So I will call it 19 and underscore final to know that this is the final version. So we reach the end of this video and I hope all this long, long video tutorial did help you and will inspire you to create beautiful comic stories. It took me 10 days to record all this video and do all the video editing too. And at final, I had more than 15 hours of video to compress into less than two hours of uh, final video. Uh, be sure I did my best to compress all this length and I'll try to do better next time for sure. Also, I couldn't spend all this time without the financial support of my patron on Patreon. So a big, big, big thanks to them for supporting the webcomic Pepper and Carrot day after day. And also by supporting the webcomic, they support the free bonus between the episode. And this video is a free bonus between the episode. So as the brush kit, as the template and as everything you could download uh, today. So a big, big thank you also for all the comments, the reshare and everything around the community and uh, around this channel. Uh, it makes me really happy and uh, see you on the next video. Uh, I don't know if it will be shorter or longer, but I will try to do something. I promise it. Bye bye.